Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Happy Monday. Uh, so we're getting really close to the end of the semester. Um, we see the end in sight. Um, so kind of lay out the plan. Um, today, I'm going to cover information from chapters 12 and 13. Um, we're going to talk about some, some topics uh, that just kind of good information to know. Uh, dealing with web, web design, web development. Uh, there's no case study or uh, coding activities with those um, or uh, any quizzes, but uh, I'm gonna cover that information uh, just kind of for your benefit. Um, so we'll do that today. And then um, plan is for the rest of this week, uh, I'm gonna give you guys time to um, catch up on any assignments that you might be missing. Um, any late assignments that you haven't turned in. Uh, so I'm gonna give you kind of a, a break from the, um, the normal stuff to uh, catch up on that. Uh, if you are cut up on that, um, you can have a little break or um, it'd probably be good to start working on your final uh, web project uh, because that's gonna be uh, coming up pretty quick. Um, let's see, let's look at the calendar here. Um, so the first part of that um, is gonna be due at the end of next week uh, where I wanted to see your homepage, um, see how that's looking. So just kind of a, a check-in point there. And then um, for this class, uh, the final um, is gonna be December 7th. So instead of a final exam, what we do is uh, pr you, you'll do a presentation for that, um, for, your, for your website. Okay, so that's, um, our time for that is Mon uh, December 7th, so um, really only have a couple of weeks um, outside of uh, Thanksgiving break to uh, get that completed, so um, it, it'll go fast. Uh, the end of the semester will be here before we know it. All right, um, so with that, let me go ahead and share my screen. We'll talk about chapters 12 and 13. Okay. All right. Um, pull up the point here. All right. Let's start with chapter twelve. <clears throat> All right. So chapter twelve um, covers uh, e-commerce. Okay. So. Um, We'll, we'll talk about what e-commerce is, the benefits and the risks of that, uh, the business models, uh, talk about some security, encryption uh, information, um, trends, projections. Uh, we'll talk about um, ordering and payment processing, kind of how that works, okay? So uh, e-commerce, I'm sure everybody's heard of it. It's just the, uh, that, this idea of the integration of communications, uh, data management, um, and security technologies that allow people to um, exchange services, um, sell products, um, buy products, services. Um, so that it's the, the major part of it is buying and, and selling of goods. Um, and so with all of these, there's that component of the financial transaction over the internet, okay? So this really started to, um, oh, in the early 2000s is when um, e-commerce e started to, to really boom. Um, the, you know, sites like Amazon, you know, were just kind of in their infancy and just started to um, start, started to come around. eBay uh, was kind of another one, which eBay was a little bit different. We'll kind of talk about that. Um, but then every major store and <clears throat> every major business uh, started to develop an e-commerce site as well as a lot of uh, smaller shops, um, businesses that started to sell uh, things over the internet. So uh, some of the advantages for businesses to do this, uh, reduce costs. Um, you know, you don't have to have stores all across the country. You can have just a few major warehouses. Um, and so there's, uh, you know, cost savings there with um, physical building, um, probably uh, not as you don't have to have as many employees to pay on payroll. 
Um, usually customers are pretty satisfied um, because they get their goods um, in a timely way without a, you know, ever having to leave their house. Uh, we've especially seen e-commerce kind of boom um, in the last six months because uh, of the whole COVID um, situation. So, um, you know, Amazon, Walmart, Target, uh, all those big businesses are really are reaping the rewards from, unfortunately, from the, it's a bad situation, but um, it's really been able to uh, keep the, the business um, going and get people the, the, need, the uh, goods and services that they need. Um, and so, yeah, there's a lot of uh, advantages there for, for sales and um, driving business. Uh, some of the advantages for consumers, of course, convenience, um, you know, shopping online. Um, you'll have a wider selection of things to buy. Uh, if you're looking for something that, you know, if you're, especially if you live in a small, <clears throat> small rural town, um, you have all the same uh, selections available to people in large urban areas. Okay. Uh, so some of the risks though, um, businesses really need to have a robust and reliable website. Um, because you, you're going to have <clears throat> thousands, you know, big businesses like Amazon, you're going to have millions of people on there uh, at any given time. Um, so you need to have a really reliable uh, website. Uh, there's always going to be the the fraudulent transactions, okay, that um, <clears throat> people have to um, kind of co-balance, you know, there's um, the risk, uh, so it kind of goes to risk for consumers, you know, uh, getting your identity, credit card information stolen, um, and then as well as increased competition. So uh, like Walmart now is, and Target, you know, have really been uh, promoting their uh, online uh, web products, uh, services um, to kind of compete with Amazon. And I've noticed that like this year, um, like the Black Friday stuff, it's all online this year. Uh, there's no, they're, they're not doing any kind of in-person uh, <clears throat> Black Friday sales. So um, <clears throat> all of the different places, Best Buy, Amazon, Target, uh, Walmart, they're all doing uh, via web uh, this time. So like I said, with risk for consumers, uh, security issues, privacy issues, um, sometimes you don't get what you thought you were getting uh, from photos and descriptions on there. Um, unfortunately, sometimes it can be a little misleading. Um, could be difficulty with returning products, just depending on the, the site where you bought it from. Um, and so, so some of these models that we talked about, uh, business to consumer, right? So that's your Amazon, your Walmart, all those. Uh, business to business. Okay, so here we start to get a little more uh, focused. Um, you know, if it's a certain industry and they need to purchase. Um, uh, so, for example, like uh, K-State has a, uh, a partnership with Staples. Okay, and so um, K-State office, uh, different offices and departments need office supplies, paper, uh, toner, all that stuff. Um, they're using staples to uh, fulfill those um, business needs. Okay, so that's kind of an example of business to business. Consumer to consumer, uh, this is where like, kind of like the eBay uh, comes into play where, um, you know, eBay provides the platform um, and then uh, consumers can sell their products to other consumers <clears throat> across the, uh, the internet. Um, and then business to government, um, that could be kind of like the, what I said with Staples and K-State, I guess K-State's kind of a, um, you know, it's a nonprofit um, state run organization. So uh, that would be kind of the same thing, business to government. All right, so um, when we talk about electronic data interchange, EDI, uh, that's the transfer of data between um, <clears throat> these uh, companies using uh, these different networks uh, facilitates the exchange of documents like purchase orders and invoices. Um, and this practice isn't really new. Um, businesses were doing this even back in the, the 60s and 70s. And um, technologies like uh, new web services and XML are kind of replacing that traditional um, electronic data uh, interchange. Okay, so that's becoming more complex 
and more robust as more businesses um, compete and um, do sales uh, through the internet. All right, so um, so who who's on the internet? Who's who's using the internet? Who's buying things? Uh, so this is just a. I believe this is uh, it's about three or four years old. Uh, this table here. <clears throat> so the online population, uh, men and women, is about about the equal amount, about the same there. Um, ages 18 to 29, pretty much almost all of those um, those people uh, that target age is online. Uh, and then it kind of just slightly goes down a little bit as we get into the, the older adults. Um, household incomes you can kind of see there is um, kind of goes up as the income increases and um, education levels again this kind of goes up as well as you go from high school to, to college graduate. Um, so that's just kind of a rough I would say this has probably changed even um, since the last four years. Um, a lot of those numbers are probably a lot higher now. Okay, so uh, there's just, these are just some links um, that you can have access to uh, when I post the slides, if you wanna dig into that a little bit further. All right, so some of the issues with e-commerce, um, <clears throat> IP or intellectual property, um, security, fraud, uh, taxation's a big one. Um, you're seeing more um, transactions through like Amazon, um, dealing with uh, taxing those goods and services. Um, four or five years ago on Amazon, um, you didn't see as, as much as that. You wouldn't um, necessarily be taxed for certain things, but states have decided, you know, this is becoming uh, such a robust business that we need to, you know, get in on some of that, um, some of that money. So. Uh, you're seeing new laws and regulations as far as taxation um, and then international commerce is, is big as well. So dealing with specifically kind of the, some of the security issues. Um, so let's talk about encryption and decryption. Uh, so when we're talking about encryption, what we're doing there is we're ensuring that privacy um, within an organization um, through uh, the transaction of data um, through the internet. Uh, it's that conversion of data into an unreadable form called uh, ciphertext. And then when we talk about decryption, that's the process of converting that ciphertext back to its original form uh, into plain text so that um, it can be read and understood. Okay. Um, and this encryption decryption process uh, requires an algorithm and a key. Uh, so we're kind of just <clears throat> talking about it here at the real basic level. Um, so some of the secure e-commerce transactions use um, <clears throat> things like a symmet symmetric key encryption or an asymmetric key encryption. Most likely it's an asymmetric key encryption or a hash encryption. And then they're also using a SSL or secure sockets layer. <clears throat> and that uh, use, uses these encryption technologies and provides that secure transmission of data across the internet. So I'll show you what, what that means here in a bit. Um, but the symmetric key, uh, we can also call this single key encryption. Uh, both the encryption side and the decryption side use the same key, okay? So you can think about a, uh, like a, a household, right? Um, mom and dad have a key and the kids have a key. So getting in and out of the house, uh, they use that same key. So uh, the, the data gets encrypted uh, into its encrypted form uh, from the on the one side, say the, the client side, then um, the server side gets that information, they decrypt it uh, using that same key, okay? So the advantage of this is it's fast, it's, it's a lot faster uh, because it's only using that one key. Now, uh, asymmetric key um, called a public key encryption, um, we're using two different uh, keys here. Uh, we're using a public key on one side and then we're using a private key. Okay, so uh, the, the data goes, it gets encrypted using that public key. <clears throat> and then they, they use a private key to decrypt that. Um, and if they're returning information back, uh, they'll um, encrypt that again with a private key, uh, but they get, it gets decrypted uh, using the public key. Okay, so uh, this process is a little bit slower um, than single key encryption, uh, but it's a lot more, it's a lot more secure. 
um, <clears throat> a hash encryption, uh, hash, they use a hash algorithm uh, to transform a string of characters into a, what we call a digest. Um, uh, it's a shorter fixed length value or key that represents the original string of information. Uh, this type of encryption is it's one way. So it's just a one way encryption. Um, and it's really used for information that's uh, not intended to be read or decrypted. Um, it's just really to verify the integrity of the information <clears throat> to make sure that that information hasn't been altered or uh, skewed in any kind of way. Okay, so a lot of businesses will use this when they are um, transmitting information and data, but they don't necessarily need a human or somebody to read it. Uh, they just want to verify that that information um, uh, has, hasn't been altered in any kind of way. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, uh, Secure Sockets Layer, or SSL. Um, this is a protocol that allows data to be privately exchanged over public networks. Uh, it was originally developed by Netscape uh, way back in the day. Um, it encrypts data sent between a client, so usually a web browser uh, and a web server. Um, it util utilizes uh, both symmetric and asymmetric keys. Um, so the thing that you'll notice is uh, at the beginning of the URL, it'll use the HTTPS protocol. Okay, so that S means secure. Uh, your browser, browser usually in the U uh, URL um, field there, it'll have a little like a padlock icon on there. So if you're ever um, on a site where you're um, sharing information, your data, um, like you're purchasing something, anything like that, always uh, just keep note to make sure that it's on a secure website, okay? Because um, you, you don't want to be sharing information, uh, sensitive information or private information on, an, uh, on a web server that's not secure, that, that doesn't have the uh, SSL um, enabled, okay? Uh, the, the SSL provides, like I said, that secure communication between the client and server <clears throat> by using um, these digital certificates for authentic, uh, authentication. Um, symmetric key encryption uses the session key for, uh, like say, bulk encryption. You know, if you have a website where you have a lot of stuff going on. Um, and then it uses uh, those message digests, so the hash encryption, <clears throat> to verify the integrity of that transmission. Okay, so uh, again, she's looking at the transmission, the data from that to make sure it's uh, intact and secure, and hasn't been altered. Uh, so these digital certificates, um, it's a form of a asymmetric key. Okay, um, so it'll contain information about the certificate, uh, the holder of that certificate, um, and uh, the, the issuer. And it's used by SSL to authenticate the identity of the web server. Okay, so. Um, these uh, the, the browsers and the servers will be looking at this to make sure it's authentic and that the certificate isn't out of date. Okay, so a lot of times those uh, certificates have expiration dates on there as well. <clears throat> um, and those certificates include a public key um, when that certificate was uh, enabled. Okay, and like I said, exp expiration date of it. Um, talks about who issued that certificate and who holds it, right? Um, and then just a digest about the certificate content. So um, some third-party companies that um, issue dig digital certificates, uh, one of the biggest ones, VeriSign, um, uh, Thought is another one, okay? So uh, there's some links there if you wanna ch check into those a little bit further. Uh, so payment, Processing across e-commerce, right? Um, we're using most of the time uh, credit cards, uh, maybe a stored value card, okay, like a gift card or something like that. Uh, <clears throat> smart cards or uh, digital cash is becoming pretty popular as well. Um, and so um, ways, so kind of these solutions for e-commerce that businesses look into, um, they can use an instant online storefront like Shopify or big commerce. Uh, they can build something um, with some off the shelf software. Uh, so there's a couple examples there. Custom built solutions. Um, so the IBM WebSphere commerce, uh, Microsoft commerce server, um, 
Uh, Amazon is getting into this as well. Okay, uh, you can build a lot of this um, by hand as well with you know uh, with things like uh, Microsoft Visual Studio, Dreamweaver. Uh, and then you also see a lot of businesses, so like maybe smaller uh, online businesses using uh, like PayPal, uh, things like that for um, handling the, uh, the transaction part of it. Okay. Um, and that's it for the e-commerce. All right. So let's look at... real quick here. <clears throat> all right, so this one's all about web promotion. All right. Okay, so we're going to talk about search engines and search uh, indices, uh, components of a search engine, how those work. Um, we'll also talk about Kind of at the end, we'll talk about iframes. Um, that was something new that got added into this. Uh, probably should have talked about iframes. I'm guess I think it'd been better to talk about that chapter 11 because it kind of ties in with some of the stuff we were doing with videos. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's where they have it in the book. So, all right. So search engines. Um, everybody's familiar with these, right? Google as uh, the most popular, Bing, Yahoo. All right. So. Um, that's kind of the market share. Uh, I forget what year this is from, uh, but there's a link there. You can go to get the, the most current one. Uh, but Google is by far the, the most popular. Um, so how these, how these search engines work is they use, um, it's a script called a, we call it a robot or a spider. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about how those work. And then there's a database that indexes all of the, the search results. And then there's a form uh, that's built to then um, access that database with the, the results from that the, uh, the robot or the spider goes through, picks up on the web. Okay, so th this spider, uh, what it is, it's a computer program uh, that basically goes and follows hyperlinks um, and just kind of walks across the web. Uh, it goes to all these pages. Okay, so there's a lot of these spiders um, or uh, bots out there that uh, Google uses or Yahoo uses um, that's going through and it's just cataloging the web. Uh, it's just, um, and it's kind of a long process. It takes it quite a while to, you know, a couple of weeks or so, um, two or three weeks to kind of go through um, the web and uh, index everything. And what it does is starts categorizing uh, pages and it starts storing uh, that information into the database, into Google's database. And so what it's looking for when it goes through the, these, the web pages, uh, it looks at the title, uh, it's looking at metadata um, that we have keywords and uh, descriptions. Okay, so we'll talk about that as well. And that'll probably be something that you'll wanna include on your um, web project. Uh, it's looking at the text in the headings. It's looking at the body text. Uh, it's looking at hyperlinks. So it's kind of looking at all this, all this information that it, that's on your page, and then it's um, cataloging all of that into its uh, database. Um, so then, what it does when it gets into the database, uh, it's a collection of all this information. Um, it gives it the most recent version, um, and then. Uh, what it'll do then is contain um, in that database uh, all the information about that so people can then go back through and uh, search for keywords. Okay, so if they're looking for, um, like, uh, for example, so if we talk about the Polytechnic K State uh, website, um, <clears throat> I don't know how many times we use the word Polytechnic on our website, but uh, quite a few, I imagine. So then if somebody um, went to a search form like Google or whatever and typed in Polytechnic School, um, it's going to go through, find out how many, uh, what web pages uh, use um, the word Polytechnic. Um, it's also going to recognize how many uh, clicks or how many views uh, that website's gotten in a particular amount of time. So it's pulling up the most popular ones and then uh, displays those search results for you. 
Okay, so if you, we typed in Polytechnic School or Polytechnic University, um, K State's probably done probably be on that first page somewhere. All right. Um, okay, so like I said, when that form is submitted, that data that's typed into the search box it's sent to the server, uh, and then it goes through all those the keywords that you entered, and it um, uh, spits out a, a result set, which is a list of information uh, with those URLs, links to those page, web pages that meet the criteria for your search. All right. Um, so the search engine result page, the SERP, uh, it's, so it's that list of items uh, that describe the web page matching your search terms. Um, usually each uh, item will contain a link to that page with um, just a brief information, maybe about the, the title of the page. Um, if you have a description in your metadata, it will include that. Um, and usually a couple lines of text from that first page uh, that it's pulling up. Um, and so how it, how it usually displays these, um, some companies pay to have their pages um, pulled up first. Okay, so they're paying Google and all these um, search, uh, search engines to display their, their content and their website first. Okay, so they're paying for that. So usually those ones will be, be displayed first. Uh, then it also goes by alphabetical order. <clears throat> like I said, link popularity is another one. And so, um, and really each search engine kind of has their own policy for um, ordering the search results. Okay, so we want our page to get recognized, right? Um, we want people to <clears throat> be able to find it when they search for something. So we really have to focus on, <clears throat> so this kind of comes into design and the whole um, framework of your site when you start putting it together. So we're thinking about uh, terms and phrases that people would use when they're looking for our site. <clears throat> so if we have a site and we're selling, um, you know, motorcycle parts, um, we're going to want to make sure that we use keywords like motorcycle and um, certain part names uh, that people would be looking for. Uh, we want to include that text in our in our different pages. Okay, uh, we want to include those words and phrases <clears throat> that describe our site and our business. You know what we're selling, so that when those uh, the bots and the spiders go through our site, that it's um, cataloging all of that. Um, don't. <clears throat> You can also, um, one a little trick too, in some of your keyword metadata, you can include, um, maybe if there's a common misspelling for something that you're selling or whatever, um, you can include that in there. So if people misspell it uh, when they're searching, it'll still find it. Um, the description, okay. Um, this is just a real brief 20 to 30 word uh, description about your site. Um, you know, it's just a real kind of to the point um, description uh, of what your site's all about. And like I said, some search engines will display that uh, description in the results pages. <clears throat> all right, so how do we get this? So we, we include these, what we call the, the meta elements um, in our page. Uh, this goes in the head section of our pages, all right? So like where we put our, uh, CSS, so our uh, style sheets, you know, our embedded style sheets, um, all that information, it's gonna go in the head section. Uh, it doesn't go in the body. Um, and so this is kind of the syntax for that. If we wanted to include, uh, for example, uh, uh, meta tag for the description of our site, we would use that meta name equals description and then content equals, and then where it says value, that's where you actually would type. So. Uh, so here's an example, uh, Acme Design, okay, uh, we use meta name description, okay, so that tells it that it's describing our page or our site, um, and then the content equals, here's where we put in, like I said, just a real brief one sentence uh, description of our site, okay, so Acme Design, a premier web consulting group that specializes in e-commerce website design, website development, website redesign, okay. So it's just like that one sentence um, <clears throat> description of your site. And then you would place that uh, syntax, that code in your the head section of your page. All right, so when we, we wanna optimize this stuff, right? So if you've ever heard of SEO, uh, stands for search engine optimization. 
Um, we're thinking about keywords for our site um, and our page titles. So by default, um, like if you're using Dreamweaver or even brackets or something, um, if you don't put anything in page title, it's just gonna automatically uh, list it as untitled. Okay, so we wanna always make sure that we have page titles in there that include the name of our company or our website, um, has those keywords that might be appropriate. Uh, looks for heading tags. Okay, so again, try to use keywords in our heading tags. Uh, and then within the text on our uh, different pages, try to include some of those keywords as much as you can. Okay, so this is where um, like writing for the web is a lot different than writing for a book or a publication or you know, a magazine, a printed magazine or something like that. Um, writing for the web really takes a little bit of effort to uh, think about some of these things to make sure that those keywords uh, get picked up uh, through search engines. Um, linking, uh, provide text navigation hyperlinks, make sure that those are all functioning. Uh, if you have hyperlinks that uh, don't uh, link correctly, uh, you'll get dinged on that um, when the uh, bots are going through and cataloging everything. Uh, use CSS for page layout. Uh, that's another important thing. Um, when you're using images and graphics, make sure that you're including that alt text. Okay, so the description text in there. Um, you know, if you have uh, a lot of images in your site and you don't have them, um, if you don't have the alt text in there included, uh, that's also going to ding you on the when those bots are going through and cataloging. Uh, again, make sure you have valid, you want to validate your HTML and your CSS. Okay. Uh, it does look at that. And, you know, you just want to, for the content, you want to be well organized and uh, meaningful uh, for your target audiences. All right. So when you want to, <clears throat> all right. So you're working on a site, you're ready to publish it. Um, make sure it's finished. Don't, don't ever put something out there that has like, under construction, okay, you'll really get dinged for that. Um, those search engine bots don't like that. Um, you can always then go into um, the search engines and submit your site, okay? That'll, um, you'll put a URL in there, uh, you fill out a form, and then that will get queued into the, uh, um, their cataloging um, cycle. And like I said, it's usually two to three weeks uh, before that uh, bot gets around to getting to your site and updating it. Okay, so uh, just something to kind of be aware of. It takes a little bit of time for that to get through. All right, so um, the preferential placement, like I said, the, 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 when you pay for um, results, uh, like example, Google AdWords is a big one. Um, I know K-State's used AdWords before to promote some of their programs. Um, that's a, a service where you pay to get those search results. Uh, cost per click or uh, pay per click, okay, CPC or PC, PPC. Um, you kind of come up with a price um, that you agree upon. Um, and then every time a visitor clicks on that, um, you get charged that amount, okay? It's usually a pretty low amount. Um, but that's kind of how that works. That's how uh, Google and those, those other companies make money. Um, cost, cost per impressions, okay. Um, so again, your ad gets um, viewed a thousand times and then you get charged for that, okay. Uh, Click-through rate, uh, it's the ratio of the number of times an ad's clicked on to the number of times an ad is viewed. All right, so if your ad was shown maybe 100 times and then uh, 20 people clicked on it, um, that click-through rate would be 20%, which is actually a pretty, pretty high um, click-through rate. Usually companies are pretty happy if they get um, two to 5% uh, click-through rate. Um, usually that's pretty good. Um, you can also provide a, it's good to provide a map, so a site map of your page, okay? So a lot of times you'll see at the bottom of a, a web page where it has kind of the site map, so like kind of those main pages uh, kind of filed below there with just um, simple little uh, clickable links on there. 
Uh, so that's something to think about. Um, web analytics. So uh, if you are, if you do have a site and you're trying, you're really serious about it, you'll probably want to include um, like Google Analytics or something like that, where you can um, <clears throat> collect data on who's accessing your site. Um, it, it does everything from showing geography, like uh, where people are coming from that click on your site um, globally. Uh, it'll tell you what the most popular pages are, uh, how long people stayed on those pages, um, keywords that were used to find your site, um, what sites people were on before they came to your, um, to your website. Okay, so um, it gives you a lot of information, a lot of data, which is good for, um, you know, different marketing purposes for your site. Um, so that link popularity, like we've talked about, and that's just the rating determined by a search engine based on the uh, number of sites that link to um, your one particular website. Okay. Um, social media optimization, again, um, creating content that's easily shareable, right? So it helps increases brand, brand awareness, uh, inbound links. Right, so you want to be able to share your site through um, all these different social media platforms. And that's becoming a, an important part of uh, web marketing. Uh, you also see things like QR codes out there, um, banner ads. Um, you know, there's a lot of other ways to, uh, to get your site um, out there to people. So this is just about QR codes. If you want some more information on that, there's a couple of links here uh, for QR code generators. Um, okay, so inline frame. Uh, like I said, I probably should have put this with chapter 11. I don't know why the book has it in this chapter, um, but it's also called, called a floating frame. Um, if you ever go to uh, YouTube and you click on the uh, share button on a video, um, it'll give you the option to embed. Okay, when you click on that embed button, what it does, it'll give you a, um, a set of code here uh, so you can embed that YouTube video um, <clears throat> in your site, okay? And so this works with, with other things as well. It doesn't necessarily have to be a YouTube video. Um, you can embed other HTML pages or um, graphics, things like that. Uh, you can embed other pages with, within your own site Okay, and so you just use the iframe element, right? So um, we, we start with the iframe, the opening tag there, we tell uh, what source it is, uh, title, we give that frame uh, a height and a width, right? And then um, a little description there and then target blank. And then we have the closing tag. So you kind of think of it as like a picture in picture type of deal here, right? And so if you ever use the, uh, like I said, the YouTube um, <clears throat> iframe embed, okay, it, it's sourcing that, uh, <clears throat> that video link, that URL, um, a, a width and a height. And then um, it also has a, a anchor reference there as well uh, for that video. So if we included this on one of our pages, um, we can, that's how we embed um, like the YouTube video. So, uh, like on my Canvas pages, um, those of you, when you've looked at the uh, previous class uh, videos, that's what I do. Um, I just use iframe code to embed that page within the, the Canvas uh, HTML. All right, that's it. That is it for chapter 13. Okay, so, um, so the rest of this week, um, I'm not going to have, I'm not going to hold class, uh, no Zoom sessions. Um, so I'm going to give you, give everybody that time to, if they do have uh, outstanding or missing assignments, um, I'll give you this week to catch up on that. Uh, for those of you that are caught up, um, you'll uh, probably want to get started on your uh, final web project if you haven't done that already. Um, you know, start, take start using those uh, wireframes and the site map that you've already developed and uh, you know start build start getting into uh, building some of those pages um, and then uh, next week uh, I'm going to go into a little more detail on the, the 
the process of the, uh, the final project. Um, also talk a little bit about the presentation part of it that you'll need to do. <clears throat> and then for those of you that are still working on, like I said, some of those missing assignments, uh, you have until November 22nd, uh, which is a Sunday. So about a, um, about two weeks, a little less than two weeks um, to get everything caught up. Uh, after the 22nd, um, I'm, I won't accept any more uh, late, late work. Uh, you, if you do submit stuff late, it's, it's, you'll get 25% off on the points. But again, that's way better than getting a zero on something. Okay. So, um, so use this week to get caught up, um, to get started on your final. Uh, if you do have questions, uh, shoot me an email. I'll also be available for, available via, uh, via Zoom uh, during our normal uh, class time on Wednesday. But um, don't, uh, don't have to worry about Zooming in on Wednesday or Friday. Uh, we'll just use this week as kind of a, <coughs> a little bit of a catch-up week for everybody. Okay. I know it's been it's been a long semester. It's been. Uh, seems like it's been one of the longest semesters for me anyway that I've ever had to teach. Uh, it's just kind of the nature of the world we live in right now. But anyway, uh, if you got questions or anything, shoot me an email, let me know. And other than that, we'll, we will, I will have a Zoom next Monday, so a week from now, um, we'll have a check-in. And um, then after that, we're, we'll be wrapping things up pretty quickly. So. All right, have a good rest of your day, good rest of your week. I'll talk to you guys later.